Hi everyone and welcome back. I am so happy to share a new tutorial today. This is another long one, so feel free to pause as needed, take breaks, and leave any questions you may have in the comments. There is no sketch for this one, but I promise it's very easy to draw. In the description box, I have a link to my website where you can download the color palette for this project. Of course, feel free to change anything to suit your style. And with the color palette, I mostly do use these exact colors, but sometimes I do slightly adjust them to be a darker or lighter shade. And we will also be using four default Procreate brushes. These will also be listed in the description box below, along with the folders where to find them. My canvas size is 12 by 12 inches, which is pretty big, so feel free to work in a smaller canvas size if that is better for your iPad. And if you create art with this tutorial, I would love to see it. Please share with me on Instagram at ZeroCatStudio. All right, let's start. In the top left, I'm choosing the Select tool and the Rectangle setting. And then I'm using that to create a large square and filling it in with light blue. Tapping on the select tool again to close out of that, and then going to my layers menu, tapping the end of that first layer and reducing the opacity to about 30%. I am swiping left on that layer, choosing duplicate. So now I have two of these same squares, going back to my transform arrow and just moving this so that the two squares are starting to create this cube shape. Now back to my layers menu and creating a new layer and putting this above the other two layers that I've created, selecting light gray and the monoline brush So connecting the two top left corners and the two top right corners, and then completing that rectangle shape, and this will be the roof. And I am holding down my pencil at the end of the line. This will snap it straight. And then if you keep holding it, you can kind of adjust it so that you can have it be perfectly lined up with the corners here or you can also tap the little adjust line up at the top when the settings pop up and you can move it that way. So filling it in and then I'm going to zoom in and use my eraser also with the monoline brush and just clean up the corners even further to make them nice and sharp. So creating a new layer, putting this one right underneath the roof that we just created, and I'm using the medium gray. And similar to how we did the roof, I'm drawing straight lines by drawing a line and holding my pencil down at the end to snap it into place, and then connecting the blue squares that we drew in the first place and using that as my guide to create the right side of this building. Now you can definitely leave that back wall in the illustration, but I am going to delete mine out and leave it just this front wall, roof, and right side of the building. In my layers menu, I am creating a new layer right above the blue square. Then I'm double tapping on that blue square layer and choosing select and then going back to the new layer that I created. So this will make sure that I am only drawing in the blue square, but I'm doing it on a new layer. 
So using black and the monoline brush, I am going to start drawing in the framing of this window. So it is uh, like a rectangle on the left and right side. And then I'm using that same technique of drawing the line and holding it down at the end to snap it straight. So same thing for the right side, I'm doing another thin rectangle. And then across the top, I'm going to do a thicker rectangle. And this will leave me some room to write a name on the front of my shop. And then I'm going to continue my frame by creating another rectangle in the just above the middle of the window and then two more lines that go down about a quarter of the way in on the left side and on the right side. I feel like this is very hard for me to describe. It might just be easier to just watch and follow along or to look at the reference of the window and kind of copy it that way. Once you know how to make the lines and the straight lines using the select, it's pretty easy to fill in. And you can also make it a different sort of frame or a different type of window. You can have no framing whatsoever, but I do feel like the frame helps show that it is a window. But yeah, make it your own. So now I am just making the top part of the frame a little bit thicker so that I have more room to place my sign. And it was definitely not intentional that I used a different shade of black there, but it's fine. It's going to get covered up. All right, finally done with the frame, but now we're just going to create a new layer and using gray, put the step in on the bottom there and you can erase I want the left and right of the frame to be in front so you can erase it or I am using the transform tool under the uniform setting to just make the rectangle fit in between the frame creating a new layer and making sure this is behind the frame, but in front of the blue square. And I'm going to use this for the layer for the door. So going back to my select tool with the rectangle setting, choosing yellow and creating a rectangle for the door. Process for the sign, this time making a new layer above the frame and choosing gray with the select tool and the rectangle setting, create a rectangle along the top. And drag and drop the color to fill it in. Okay, almost done with the building part of the illustration. So we just need to finish up the door. So creating a new layer above the door and using that same rectangle selection tool, creating a blue rectangle for the window of the door. And dragging and dropping the color to fill it in. And then while I'm here, I'm going to create the doorknob. So just turning off the selection tool, creating another layer, switching to black, and using the monoline brush to just create a little circle for the doorknob. Okay, so we're starting to get a good amount of layers here. So I'm going to group and organize a few of these together. So I'm swiping right on each of the door layers and putting them into a group and renaming it. Same thing for all of the building layers, swiping right on each of those, making them into their own group. So now I have everything except for that very first blue square in little groups, and that will help me keep things, see, that will help me just see, keep things organized and see what I'm doing better. Okay, finally starting on the plants. So creating a new layer, making sure it is behind all of the building layers. Honestly, it should also be behind the door layer, but for some reason I put it in front. 
I, it's fine either way. Actually, before we start on the plants, we're going to do these brown boxes that the cat is laying on. So creating a square and filling that in with the brown. And then double tapping on the select tool just to turn it off and then turn it back on again so that I can make a second rectangle on the same layer. Now I feel I made it a little too big, so I'm using the transform tool with the freeform setting to make it a little smaller. And then I'm actually going in with my eraser, cleaning it up a little bit more. Creating a new layer and choosing peach with the monoline brush, I am creating an oval for the top of the first planter. Holding my pencil down and pressing a finger to snap it into place, then drawing a curved line to connect the bottom of the planter. You can hit edit shape and adjust if needed, and I'm just making sure everything's lined up. And then once I have that, I am dragging and dropping the peach color onto the bottom of the planter and then brown into the center. And I'm just keeping this all on one layer to keep it nice and simple and easy. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this curved pot for all of the curved pots in the illustration. So I am swiping right on this layer to duplicate it. Swipe right, tap duplicate, then choosing the transform tool, the arrow up on the top right, and moving this where I want it to be. I'm also keeping it under the freeform setting so I can slightly adjust each planter so that they are not all completely the same. Okay, now even though we have more of these round planters to add, we're going to hold off on doing that because I want to create about half of the plants fully and then I'm going to just duplicate all of those to add a second layer of plants and adjust them all slightly from there to give variety. But yes, yeah, so <laughs> we're so we're going to hold off on creating any more of the round and we're going to create some of these more rectangular planters. So I'm choosing a slightly lighter shade of peach and using the rectangle tool, the selection tool with the rectangle setting, just like we did for the building. So I'm creating two of those, one on each side, and I'm making sure that it's okay if the rectangle and the round planters overlap for now, because they're on different layers, but I don't want these two rectangle plants to be touching, so I'm drawing them sort of far apart from one another. And that will make things a lot easier later. Okay, so I am quickly renaming these layers just to help keep track of things, but I have one more thing to do for the round planter, and that is the cord that it is hanging from. So I'm creating a new layer and using the medium gray, and I'm just going to draw a straight line from the center of the outside oval up above the, to up to the very top of the frame, and then connecting that with a triangle from the outside of the left and right of the oval. Okay, so creating a new layer behind that little triangle that we just made, but above all of the planters, and I'm using a light yellow green. I am going to start with the leaves on the and the or the plant on the top here. So I am using the monoline brush at a smaller size, and I'm going to start drawing some wavy lines coming down. I want to make sure that all of the lines are slightly different from each other, slightly different lengths, different curves in different places, and I'm having a couple of them overlap. 
now I am drawing some pointed leaf shapes. I'm going to adjust the size of my brush to be even smaller. And I'm drawing my leaves pointing in different directions on different sides of the initial green lines that we drew. And I am making sure that all of these leaf shapes are completely closed shapes. And this will be important for when we go to fill them in because I'm going to use recolor to do that. Okay, and then to color them in, I am dragging and dropping into one leaf, and then up on the top, tap continue filling with recolor, drag the little cross into one of the leaf shapes, and then just tap inside all of the rest to continue filling all of them in. I'm just cleaning up a couple of little spots as needed. And then I just wanted to add a couple more leaves, so I repeated that same process until I was happy with how the full plant looked. Okay, so for our second plant, it's going to be a bird of paradise. So we are going to draw a straight line up from the center and then build off of that. So I'm drawing some long curved thinner leaves. So this is on the same layer as the other hanging plant that we drew, but I am going to do this in a couple of layers. So starting off, I'm going to do these first four leaves, making sure that these are not overlapping. And once I have that first layer of leaves, I'm creating a new layer, switching to a slightly darker shade of green, and I'm going to add two more leaves overlapping the ones that I already drew. Moving on to the next plant, I'm creating a new layer and bringing it behind all of the planters. And using black, I am drawing some branches coming out at varying heights. Then I am creating another layer above that and going back to my green and creating some of the same or similar types of leaves that we did in the hanging plant. Going back to the layer with those uh, dark branches and I'm going to start working on my final plant that I'm going to draw before we start shading and then we'll use those to duplicate. So I'm going to work on, this is a fiddle leaf fig and I am just drawing a slightly bumpier little trunk going, going straight up. And then back on the same layer with those leaves that we just worked on and creating some wider round leaves with some, they're, they're, these ones are going to be slightly bumpier. 
So this is going to be another two layers of leaves plant and I'm making sure that this first layer of leaves do not overlap one another. So now I'm going back to one of the other plant layers that I created. It doesn't matter which one. I'm choosing a lighter shade of green and I'm adding a couple more leaves onto this plant and this time they can overlap since they are on their own layer. All right, so before we start duplicating all of these plants and adding a second round, we are going to shade what we have so that we only have to do that process once. So I am going to use two fingers to swipe right on all of the plant and pot layers. I'm choosing a darker shade of green than I drew the initial plants in. So I'm using this darker green from my palette and I am using the wet acrylic brush. And if you forget what layer has which plant, you can just turn them on and off and that will help you see what you are what layer what the layer that you're on actually has because sometimes it can be hard to tell since all of these shapes are similar and then I'm just starting to add some shading to the edges of these leaves to be honest I am not really thinking too much about the light source or the technical side of it I'm just adding some shadows to one side of every leaf and I am adjusting to a darker green as needed. Okay, once I've gone through all or most of the leaf layers with the darker green, I am switching to yellow and adding some more variation and highlights with that. If needed, you can always go back to the darker green and add some additional shadows and contrast. So for the pots, I'm actually going to create a new layer above them. Tap that layer again, choose clipping mask, and then tap the N on that layer and scroll to multiply. I'm using the flat brush this time and the same peach that we used to draw these planters already and then I'm switching to a slightly darker shade and just adding a final shadow along the very edge of each one. Then I'm going to pinch that layer down so they're combined and do the same process for the other set of planters. So I've created another layer above them, uh, made it a clipping mask and set it to multiply and adding some shadows to one side of each of these pots. And then I'm also on one of them doing a line across the top. Okay, so now we are going to pinch that clipping mask down and combine those layers. And then I'm going to swipe right on all of my plant and pot layers and group them together so that I have one group of all of my plants. And I forgot to add the uh, like sticks or branches from that one final plant. So I'm just dragging up and dropping that into the group too. Then I am swiping right on that whole group and duplicating it and then tapping the transform arrow and flipping the whole thing horizontally and then moving it slightly over so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm also moving it behind that layer the, with the steps or the 
wooden boxes that the cat's going to be laying on. Making sure that I have my whole plant group chosen in the layers menu, so it's highlighted in blue, then tapping the select tool under the freehand setting, and I'm going to draw around one plant at a time. So I'm starting with this hanging plant up here. Once I've drawn all the way around it, I'm tapping the arrow tool to move it where I want on the canvas and to adjust the shape and size. So I'm tapping my select tool again to do this with the next plant and I'm starting to lose track of where things are since this is behind all of my other plants. So I'm just turning the group on and off to be able to see a little better. And then I'm grabbing the fiddly fig from back there, making it a little bit bigger and placing that exactly where I'd like. And then just repeating this process with all of the plants in this group. So I am using the selection tool to draw around it, then tapping the arrow or the transform tool to move it where I want and adjust the shape and size, and then going back to just the selection tool to draw around the next plant and keep on repeating that process. Once you finish all of the plants in that group, you can switch to the front group of plants if you want to, and you can do the same thing with adjusting the size and placement. I, honestly, if I, I actually liked how, it, watching this back, I liked how it looked right there, so I probably wouldn't have even have gone and adjusted these any further, but yeah, sometimes, many times, I don't know when to stop. Plants are all done. I am creating a new layer above all of the plants, but of course still behind the building. And I'm using gray and the 6B pencil because I want to sketch out my cat. I just feel like it is easier for me to draw. <laughs> it's, I can't, I need to sketch these things out. Okay, so I'm drawing an oval for the cat's body, curved line coming down for the tail, drawing the little back foot and then another smaller oval for the cat's head, two triangles for the ears, the face, and now I'm just going in with the eraser to clean up and refine a little bit until I'm happy with how the sketch looks. Switching back to the monoline brush and changing the sketch layer to multiply, creating a new layer and bringing it below the sketch. Then I am using gray to trace around the whole sketch. If it's hard to see, go into the layers menu, tap the M and reduce the opacity. And then I am tracing around the whole cat, filling, I will fill in the full shape and then I will shade it from there. creating two clipping masks above the cat. So create a new layer, tap on it again, and choose clipping mask. Set the lower clipping mask to multiply and leave the other one as normal. Now the multiply layer is for the shadows and the normal is for the highlights. And we're going to start with the shadows on the multiply layer. I just made a mistake here and for I forgot to select that layer. I do switch it later, but you want to start off with the multiply layer. And then I'm choosing black and the flat brush, and I will add some shading to the 
bottom of the cat's tail, the like inside of the body, and the either side of the head. Also the lower part of the foot and the ears. And I'm going to make sure the darkest part of the shadows are right between where the head and the body meet so that there is a good separation there. I am also decreasing the size of my brush to make sure I get the ears and the side of the face a little more clearly there. And don't worry if it looks rough because we are going to blend it out. So once you have it sort of filled in like this, you can take the blender. I have it set with the wet acrylic brush and I am just going to gently blend out all of the shading that we did so it's a little more smooth. Switching to the normal clipping mask or the top layer clipping mask, a light gray, decreasing the size and opacity of the brush and using that to define the face and add some highlights to the back and other side of the tail. Then I'm going back to my shadow layer, changing to the dry ink brush and using that to create the face and also just add some more shadow and texture to my cat. So I'm going around the top of the foot, the edges of the ears and the tail and then the side of the face. Going back to my other clipping mask with the highlights, choosing the peach and creating the nose. And finally choosing a light, very light pink and reducing the opacity to just like we did for the shadow layer, add some extra texture and highlight. Once that is done, I am turning off my sketch layer and I'm going to zoom out to see how everything is looking. And I decided to blend out that highlight that we just did a little bit. It just seemed a little too sharp. Moving on to our door, so I'm opening up that group, choosing the yellow layer, swiping right with two fingers to turn on alpha lock. Then I'm choosing the same yellow that we started with, making it slightly darker. And using the flat brush, I am going to add some shadow to the left side of the door and along the top. Doing the same thing for the blue layer of the door. So I'm swiping right with two fingers on that layer to turn on alpha lock, choosing a slightly darker shade of blue and creating a shadow on the left and top sides of that rectangle. And then I'm also creating a little shadow right underneath the doorknob. I went back to the yellow layer for that. Now I have lightened the color of my brush and I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight to the front of that yellow layer. And moving on to the little box or steps the cat's laying on, using two fingers to swipe right on that layer and turn on alpha lock, then choosing a slightly darker shade of brown and my wet acrylic brush, I am adding some texture to this box. And I am mainly focusing right underneath the cat and along the edges of this shape.
I am cleaning up my layers menu a little bit and deleting that sketch. All right, now working on the window, I am creating a new layer right above that very first blue square, setting that layer to multiply, choosing the same blue that we created the square with, and then I'm going to double tap on that blue square layer to select it, but then go back to drawing on the new layer that I just created and set to multiply. I am using the flat brush and creating some blue streaks, creating a new layer behind the building, but in front of everything else and using still the flat brush, but with white, I am creating some more uh, highlights or like glare that go across everything. So I'm just doing a few of those lines and I'm overlapping them a little bit to get some different opacities. Then I'm reducing the opacity of that whole layer to about 70%. And I'm also going to reduce the opacity of the blue streak multiply layer. And this whole time I've still had that blue square selected so that I'm only drawing in that layer. You could also just do the whole rectangle to select and draw in technique like we did before. But now I have turned off the selection tool I'm going back to my layers menu and finding that gray step that is in front of the door and on the very bottom of the building. I am swiping right with two fingers on that layer, turning on alpha lock, and then I am just going across it with the white and the flat brush, holding my pencil down at the end. And now for the sign. So I'm creating a new layer above everything else that we've created switching to the monoline brush and creating two white dots in the top corners of that rectangle. Tapping the wrench icon to open up the actions menu, choosing add and then add text, typing what I want my shop to be named. Got really, really creative with this. Once you've typed it, tap on your text and then tap the little upper and lowercase a that are in the top right of the keyboard. And you can open up all of the different settings and different fonts that you can change to. Once I have that set, I am duplicating the text layer, then going to the bottom text layer, double tapping it, choosing edit text, and then highlighting all of the text by double tapping on the actual writing, choosing a pink color to set that to, and then moving that whole layer slightly to the left of the text. I am adding my signature and that is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.